Melissa Rankin, catch and release. Catch and release, Melissa Rankin. Four letters, one syllable, and between four to eight legs. I'm talking about bugs. <laughs> yes, those little and sometimes not so little creatures that move our seen and unseen world, yet elicit different reactions from every single one of us. But before I continue, for all of you strict entomologists in the room, I'm going to take a moment and clarify something for you. I'm going to be using the word bug as an all-encompassing phrase. <laughs> Arachnids, insects, they're all going to be known as bugs for the purpose of this speech. It's kind of like if you were to lump Canada in with America. <laughs> yes, they're their own country, but... <laughs> really cares. <laughs> Plus, it's an upgrade. You're welcome, Canada. <laughs> but there is something that I do need to tell you folks before I continue to set up context. And I don't really like to share it because I always get different reactions from people in Austin and most of the time it's not in my favor. Uh, but I'm going to tell you guys anyways because I feel like this is a safe space and I don't see any sharp objects. Okay, I am from California. <laughs> but one of the very first things I learned when I moved here to Cal for, from California to Austin over five years ago is that even the bugs are bigger in Texas. <laughs> Tree roaches the size of your palm that scurry off with small children and tiny dogs. <laughs> and I've seen my fair share of zombie apocalypse movies, but then I found out it's actually happening here. And it happens every year. I call them zombies. Texans call them Cicadas? <laughs> and did you know that there are some broods of cicada that actually slumber for 17 years? And then they burst out of the ground and they rip off their skins and then they mate, they lay eggs, and then they die. <laughs> Which actually doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> but I myself, I'm a bug pacifist. I have a very successful catch and release program because I truly <laughs> believe that all bugs serve a purpose and who am I to disrupt that natural order? As long as we respect each other's boundaries. <laughs> because if you are on my person or in my bed, then you will die! <laughs> pacifist even when I was younger. Of course, growing up in California, my best friend and I, we loved us in Baywatch. <laughs> but instead of Baywatch, we would play Bee Watch, where we'd save drowning bees from her pool. <laughs> and it would kind of look something like this. Hold on, little bee. I'm coming for you. You have to shake out the hair. <laughs> <laughs> of a bug bite, and I didn't see what bit me. But I have a theory. Drunk spider. Yes, the extrovert of the arachnids, the woo girl of the group. This little spider was out with her BFF, Betty the Black Widow, because Betty had just caught a mate, and it was time to celebrate. <laughs> and this little spider had had one too many cosmopolitans when the beetle bar bouncer had to approach 
approach her and say, ma'am, you are too intoxicated. It is time for you to go. And she said, I'm not drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and she started climbing up my leg, and halfway up my leg, she said, Psh, this place is lame anyways, and she bit me. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, this is just a theory. I do not have scientific evidence <laughs> that spiders like cosmopolitans. <laughs> four letters, one syllable, and between four to eight legs, these little, and like I said, sometimes not so little critters, elicit different reactions from every single one of us. But in my time here in Austin, I have cultivated a very strong bug philosophy predicated on the coy game of you do your thing and I'll do mine. Just stay off of my person and out of my bed. And lay off the cosmopolitans, will ya? <laughs>